Golden head by golden head, like two pigeons in one nest, folded in each other's wings, they lay down in their curtained bed, like two blossoms on one stem, like two flakes of new fallen snow, like two wands of ivory, tipped with gold for awful kings. Moon and stars gazed in at them. Wind sang to them lullaby. Lumbering owls forbore to fly. Not a bat flapped to and fro round their rest. Cheek to cheek and breast to breast, locked together in one nest. Early in the morning, when the first cock crowed his warning, neat like bees, as sweet and busy, Laura rose with Lizzie, fetched in honey, milked the cows, aired and set to rights the house, kneaded cakes of whitest wheat, cakes for dainty mouths to eat. Next. Churned butter, whipped up cream, fed their poultry, sat and sewed, talked as modest maiden should. Lizzie, with an open heart, Laura, in an absent dream, one content, one sick in part, one warbling, for the mere bright day's delight. One longing for the night. At length, slow evening came. They went with pitchers to the reedy brook. Lizzie, most placid in her look. Laura, most like a leaping flame. They drew the gurgling water from its deep. Lizzie plucked. Purple and rich golden flags, then turning homewards, said, "The sunset flushes those furthest loftiest crags. Come, Laura, not another maiden lags, no wilful squirrel wags. The beasts and birds are fast asleep, but Laura loitered still among the rushes, and said, 'The bank." Was steep, and said the hour was early still. The dew not fallen, the wind not chill. Listening ever, but not catching the customary cry. Come by, come by. With its iterated jingle of sugar-baited words, not for all her watching. Once discerning, even one goblin, racing, whisking, tumbling, hobbling, let alone the herds, that used to tramp along the glen, in groups or single, of brisk fruit merchant men, till Lizzie urged, "Oh, Laura, come! I hear the fruit call, but I dare not look." You should not loiter longer at this brook. Come with me home. The stars rise, the moon bends her rock, each glowworm winks her spark. Let us get home before the night grows dark, for clouds may gather. Though this is summer weather, put out the lights and drench us through. Then, if we lost our way, what should we do? Laura turned cold as stone, to find her sister heard that cry alone, that goblin cry, "Come by our fruits, come by." Must she then buy no more such dainty fruit? Must she no more such succous pasture find, gone deaf and blind? Her tree of life drooped 
from the root. She said not one word in her heart's sore rake, but peering through the dimness, not discerning, trudged home, her pitcher dripping all the way. She crept to bed and lay, silent till Lizzie slept, then sat up in a passionate yearning and gnashed her teeth for balk desire and wept as if her heart would break. Day after day, night after night, Laura kept watch in vain. In sullen silence of exceeding pain, she never caught again the goblin cry, Come by, come by. She never spied the goblin men, hawking their fruits along the glen. But when the noon waxed bright, her hair grew thin and grey. She dwindled as the fair full moon doth turn to swift decay and burn her fire away. One day, remembering her Colonel Stone, she set it by a wall that faced the south, dewed it with tears, hoped for a root, watched for a waxing shoot. But there came none. It never saw the sun. It never felt the trickling moisture run, while, with sunk eyes and faded mouth, she dreamed of melons, as a traveller sees false waves in desert drouth, with shade of leaf-crowned trees, and burns the thirstier in the sandful breeze. She no more swept the house, tended the fowls or cows, fetched honey, kneaded cakes of wheat, brought water from the brook, but sat down listless in the chimney nook and would not eat. Tender Lizzie could not bear to watch her sister's cankerous care, yet not to share she, night and morning, caught the goblin's cry, Come by, our orchard fruits, come by, come by. Beside the brook, along the glen, she heard the tramp of goblin men, the voice and stir. Poor Laura could not hear, long to buy fruit to comfort her, but fear to pay too dear. She thought of Jeanie in her grave, who should have been a bride, but who, for joy's brides hoped to have, fell sick and died in her gay prime, in earliest winter time, with the first glazing rhyme, with the first snowfall of crisp winter time. Till Laura dwindling, seemed knocking at death's door. Then Lizzie weighed no more, better and worse, but put a silver penny in her purse, kissed Laura, crossed the heath and clumps of firs, at twilight halted by the brook, and for the first time in her life began to listen and look laughed every goblin when the spied her peeping came towards her hobbling flying running leaping puffing and blowing chuckling clapping crowing clucking and gobbling mopping and mowing full of airs and graces pulling wry faces Dimier grimaces, cat-like and rat-like, rattle and wombat-like, snail-paced in a hurry, parrot-voiced and whistler, 
helter skelter, hurry scurry, chattering like magpies, fluttering like pigeons, gliding like fishes, hugged her and kissed her, squeezed and caressed her, stretched up their dishes, panniers and plates. Look at our rapples, russet and dun. Bob at our cherries, bite at our peaches, citrons and dates, grapes for the asking. Pears red with basking out in the sun, plums on their twigs, pluck them and suck them, pomegranates, figs. Good folk, said Lizzie, mindful of Jeanie. Give me much and many, held out her apron, tossed them her penny. Nay, take a seat with us, honour and eat with us. They answered grinning, our feast is but beginning, night yet is early, warm and dew pearly, wakeful and starry, such fruits as these. No man can carry. Half their bloom would fly, half their dew would dry, half their flavour would pass by. Sit down and feast with us. Be welcome guest with us. Cheer you and rest with us. Thank you, said Lizzie, but one waits at home alone for me. So without further parleying, if you will not sell me any of your fruits, though much and many, give me back my silver penny. I tossed you for a fee. They began to scratch their pates, no longer wagging, purring, but visibly demurring, grunting and snarling. One called her proud, cross-grained, uncivil, their tones waxed loud, their looks were evil, lashing their tails. They trod and hustled her, elbowed and jostled her, clawed with their nails, barking, mewing, hissing, mocking, tore her gown and soiled her stocking, twitched her hair out by the roots stamped upon her tender feet, held her hands, and squeezed their fruits against her mouth to make her eat.